Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Um, if you're anything like me, you've developed a certain level of facility uh, playing over chord changes and you can take a solo basically over a jazz standard, but not evenly. There are certain chords that you're all over and certain chords that possibly you, uh, you struggle a little bit and that's what we're gonna work on today. Some of the most, uh, most common um, types of chords and scales that people struggle a little bit and I've got a bit of a method that I think I've come up with that hopefully um, hopefully will help you, hopefully will help me as well. So you come across a C major chord in a tune and you can approach that from any angle. You um, Chances are the C major scale is very, very much under your fingers and the sound is in your head and you can approach it. You can play the chord tones, you can approach it chromatically, you can kind of do whatever you like. You're essentially quite free over that chord. And then, again, if you're anything like me, you come across a, a half diminished chord or a diminished chord and you've probably got some things you can use, some vocab that you have, but your vocab is kind of greatly diminished suddenly. Um, and personally, I've tried a bunch of different techniques, you know, to work on, let's, let's just say diminished scales, you know. Um, the whole half diminished scale, all right? And you can think of that in a lot of different patterns. You can derive triads, diminished triads, minor triads, major triads from all of that. I've actually got a video on doing all of that um, uh, that I posted a few months ago that you can go back and watch if you like. Um, but it kind of dawned on me that thinking of these sort of less common chords in terms of modes and in terms of triads and in terms of all these kind of tricks for sort of, sort of avoiding actually learning what the chord was and what the scale was, might not be the best solution. It might not really be serving me. They might kind of help me kind of do a quick fix and come up with, uh, with you know, some ways of getting through that type of chord, but they might not really be giving me the freedom over uh, those types of chords and those types of scales that I'm after and that I have over you know, the more common major chords. So I've come to kind of the realization that thinking of scales in their own right is really, really important, not as modes of another scale or as, you know, a series of triads or, you know, as any, 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 anything other than what that scale actually is, you know, so I'm not translating it into from something else. Um, you know, I'm not trying to, for instance, play uh, C major material over a B half diminished chord, you know, and, and turning a B Locrian scale into a C major scale. I'm trying to think of B Locrian scale as its own thing, you know? Um, and so I've come up with a bunch of exercises here to um, kind of promote that way of thinking and hopefully um, get you uh, experiencing some kind of freedom over those types of chords. So I've started by just writing out a bunch of common scales uh, that you, you know, commonly uh, come across in jazz and writing them out by scale degrees. So for instance, with a Locrian scale that I just mentioned, you're not thinking of it as the seventh mode of a major scale. You're thinking of it as uh, a scale, say, starting on whatever note it has as the tonic, having a flat two, flat three, flat five, flat six, and flat seven. Might sound like a bit of a kind of a, Bit of a mind bender at first, but I really, really think this is the, the kind of way to think of it. I've then written out a few uh, shapes, a few numerical shapes um, that I've applied to static chords. For instance, we start off with just a basic arpeggio. So one, three, five, seven, progress to one, two, three, five. You know, the classic kind of Coltrane pattern. We then move on to one, four, two, three. Five, three, oh, sorry, five, two, four, three, six, seven, two, one. So I'm trying to, um, 
trying to really reinforce the scale degrees of each scale in my head. And at first I'm trying to apply them over static chords. So I've written out um, uh, just the, each, each numerical pattern and the chords that they apply to. <laughs> I've then applied those shapes to common chord progressions. So in this case, I mean, you know, there are so many common chord progressions, but in this case, I've just chosen three. I've chosen a three, six, two, five uh, in a major key. I've chosen a two, five, one in a minor key, and I've chosen a one flat three diminished two, five. Kind of a, kind of a trad progression, if you like. And I've tried to apply those shapes uh, to each of those progressions. <laughs> combined some of those shapes um, uh, so that we have some more more realistic voice leading I guess so this is once we become a little bit more accustomed to thinking of these scales in their own right and uh, we become a bit more familiar with their scale degrees now we can actually voice lead through them <laughs> And finally, I've um, halved the length of these shapes, or doubled the speed of them, um, so we're in quavers now, or eighth notes. Um, so we have a more realistic kind of uh, jazz line, I guess, jazz eighth note line going through these common chord progressions, and they're still made up out of these um, numerical shapes or melodic cells, I guess, um, uh, that we've derived, you know, from the scale degrees. Um, and of course, these, these scale degrees, these shapes are just, you know, a few 
arbitrary patterns that I've come up with. There are many, many others. You don't necessarily have to stick with these. But I think as a practice method, uh, this could be really helpful. So I've used a bit of chromaticism in some of these just to kind of assist the voice leading. Um, so hopefully, hopefully these exercises can kind of get you uh, pushing your fingers in some unusual directions or unfamiliar directions and um, you know really approaching these chords from all different angles. So thanks for watching, I hope this has been helpful. Um, if it has, please feel free to drop a comment below. If it hasn't, I guess also drop a comment below. Um, and yeah, I'd love to know how you go practicing this stuff. I'll be posting a few more videos uh, pretty soon, so check out the links below. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers.